It's TK Friday, and today on The Joy of Editing, it's a full edit. Today's image was taken at Artist Pellet Death Valley. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It is TK Friday. Today's image was taken at Artist Pellet Death in Death Valley, and this image comes to us from James May. Thanks, James, for the use of your image. Now, as always, when I'm doing a full edit, I start out here in Lightroom. I'm starting out with a linear profile that I'm using for James' camera, and then I click Auto, and I just want some basic edits here. I want the image going in pretty flat into Photoshop. As far as detail, just a little bit of basic sharpening, no noise reduction, and as far as lens corrections, I always check on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. And then for transform, I just clicked auto just to straighten up the image. And then I did a bit of a crop, a 16 by 9 crop in this image. I thought that looked really nice. And as far as that, that's about it right here. And then we're going to send this image into Photoshop. But note, there were some people in this image, which I took out in Photoshop using the remove tool. But you can see the scale of this image when you look at the size of these people compared to these rocks right here. It's pretty amazing. But when you get your image download, these people will be removed. I removed those in Photoshop with a remove tool. But I just wanted to show you here the scale of these rocks. Now, don't forget, you can download the image as well as the PDF notes that go along with this full edit. I will have links in the description below this video. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. Thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. And now we're ready to send this image into Photoshop. Now, all I would do at this point is right click on the image, go to edit in and click on edit in Photoshop 2024. But as always, I'm already there. And here we are in Photoshop. Before we start the edit, I did a little bit of research on the artist palette. It's a fascinating location in Death Valley National Park. It's renowned for its vibrant array of colors, including hues of red, orange, yellow, blue, pink, and green. These colors are the result of volcanic deposits rich in compounds such as iron oxides and chlorite. And bearing that all in mind, let's see what we can do to bring out some beautiful color in these rocks. Let's get started. If you watch my TK Friday videos, you know I always like to start out with what I like to call balance and contrast. And I'm going to do that today. Now, I don't have a sky in this image, so it's going to be simple. We're just going to click on the Luminosity Mask button. Click Midtones 3 to put a Midtones 3 mask on a color grading layer. And we'll click this button right here to add a color grading layer. And you can see there is my Mids 3 mask on it. Now, that mask is only there to protect me from clipping shadows and highlights. I'll start out with shadows, so we'll click this shadow button. And now what I want to do is darken up my shadow. So I'm going to take this brightness slider, and we're going to drag it to the left over to like right here, minus 43. Now, I wanted to try something a little different here. So I'll, instead of going to midtone second, I went to highlights. So I'll click on the highlight button. And what I want to do is I used a minus 43 for the shadows. So I thought I would try a positive 43 for the highlights, which would be right here. Okay. And now you can see if we look at the curves adjustment. Now, remember, if I hope you saw my deep dive video on the color grading tool, that the color grading tool does work with the curves adjustment layer and it really makes it very easy to use. But there you can see I've set my shadows right here. I've set my highlights right here. And now what I want to do is go to midtones and I just want to open up the midtones a bit. So we'll take this brightness slider and move it to the right to right there. Plus 26. Now I'm not going to do any color grading on here because I want to see if I can bring out these natural colors in these rocks. Let me go ahead and shut this layer off to see the before. Here's the before. I'll turn it back on. Here's the after. And already I think we're off to a good start. 
Moving on to step number two, and don't forget to get those PDF notes because they're going to have all these steps laid out for you to give this edit a try out for yourself. For the next step, I need to get to the multi mask panel. Now, right now, the color grading tool is in the way. I can click this X to close the color grading tool. Nothing changes on this layer. I'm going to go and click on the luminosity mask button because what I want to do next is darken the shadows, like burn the shadows a bit. And to do that, what we'll do is choose a darks luminosity mask. I'll start with darks one. Here's darks one. Here's darks two. What I'm trying to do is find the really dark tones. As I go to the left, I'm finding darker tones. Here's darks three. And I think darks three is where I want to be. And now what I'll do is output this to a curves adjustment layer. And that's this button right here. So we'll click on this button right here. Nothing changes here, but you can see there is my darks three mask on this curves adjustment layer. But what we're going to do is change its blend mode to a blend mode that darkens those shadows. And that would be multiply. So you see this button on my combo, or you'll also find it on your CX panel right here. So click the multiply button and automatically that just darkens down those shadows found in darks three. You see that? Let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here is after. Pretty cool, right? But I think what I want to do is lower this opacity. And I think I want to take it down to right there, 50%. Now let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. But that's a global burning of the shadows. Now the next step, I'll be using a TK action. And I like to keep my CX panel opened up for action so I'm going to click my TK action button and I'll just keep this opened up the first action I want to use is the paint contrast action and it's right here so we'll click this button it defaults at 50% gray you see that right there we're just going to click OK and now we have a brush and we can start painting on contrast but I'm going to do something a little bit different today you want to try something a bit different let's check this out now, if you look here, you can see my paint contrast layer here. It's a blank pixel layer in a hard mix blend mode with a fill of 15%. I'm going to do a global paint contrast. In fact, I won't even paint. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click this button on my combo panel. You'll also find it on your CX panel. This is the fill button. I'm going to fill it with 50% gray. If yours doesn't say 50% gray, click on this drop down and you'll find 50% gray in there. Click on that and now click OK. And now we've just added global contrast to the entire image. So let me shut this layer off. Here is before and here is after. Now that is too strong. So what I'm going to do is take my opacity and pull it back to like right there, 60%. So let me shut this off. Here is before and here's after. Some of my really dark tones are getting too dark. So I can fix that with something called blend if. Edit blend if that is. So we're going to click this button on our multi mask panel to get edit blend diff. And what I'm going to do is let's click no darks one. It'll keep us out of darks one. There's no darks one. You see all that lightened up a little bit. And now here's no darks two. And I like that better. So that's protecting the darkest tones from getting darker. Now let me shut this layer off. Here is before and here is after. If you want to see what it looks like without using blend if, see this checkbox right here next to gray, click this. So this is what it looks like without blend if, and this is what it looks like with it. And I think that really helps. And now I'll click this X to close the edit blend if panel, but nothing changes here. You can see by that symbol, I have blend if on this layer. Now I'll shut this global paint contrast layer off by clicking the eye. Here's before and here's after. And now if we click this button, this is the before after button on my combo panel. You also find it on the CX panel. Let me click this. Here's the overall before and now we're here. So I really love the direction we're going. And by the way, if you ever want to keep one of these panels open all the time, just click on the fly out or hamburger menu and uncheck auto close TK actions menu and that way it'll stay open after you run an action because normally after you run an action this auto closes but if you have that unchecked it'll stay open and now as i study this image i'm thinking the midtones could come up a little bit so a real easy way to take care of that to lighten up the midtones is click the luminosity mask button and i like to use midtones one we have three different midtones we have midtones one midtones two and midtones three you see how midtones three is very light 
I'm going to go to Midtones 1. It's the least aggressive of the Midtone luminosity masks. Now, they're all Midtone luminosity masks, but I'm going to output this to a curves adjustment layer. You know, it could be a levels. It could be a brightness contrast. It doesn't matter. I'm just using this for a blend mode, so I'll click on my curves. I always do curves. It doesn't really matter here, but all I want to do is change the blend mode to screen. Right now, it's on normal, and you don't see any effect here when I shut this layer off. But now when I click on screen, it'll lighten up the midtones. You see that? So now if I shut this layer off, here's before and here's after. It just lightens up the midtones. I think they're a little too light, so we're gonna take the opacity and pull it back. I'm gonna take it back to right there, 62%. So let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. Yeah, that looks better. Coming up next is another TK action. And this time I want to use the soft pop action you'll find it right here. So let me click on soft pop and here is my soft pop action. Now notice, I'm gonna shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. Notice how we get a little more detail in the image. We get a nice little pop of color and some contrast. It's really nice. So let me shut it off again. Here's before and here is after. And you know what? I'm gonna leave this at 100%. We are really starting to bring some color out in these rocks, by the way. Now, when I got to this point in my original edit, I started thinking about things like, what would the Orton effect look like in here? So I tried that. Wasn't a big fan of it on this image, but then I thought, what about make it glow? How about another action? Make it glow. So let me find it. It's right here. Click on make it glow. A Gaussian blur dialog comes up with a radius of 34.6 pixels. I'm just gonna click okay. I really like the way this looks. We're even getting a little bit more color and we're getting a bit of a glow that is offsetting the extra detail that we got when we use soft pop and now a little bit more color. Let me shut make it glow off. Here is before and here is after. Some of the colors are a little bit too strong and I'll take care of that and I'll show you how we do that next. I'm coming up to the TK9 multi-mask panel and clicking on this button to get a saturation vibrance mask. Now, it defaults at a number one for saturation. You can go to a two, three. Basically, what it's trying to find are the really oversaturated colors. They're the colors represented in the lighter tones. As you can see, like this little area right here is much lighter down in here and up in here. So that is a good targeted area. Now we need to output this to an adjustment layer, and I will output it to a hue saturation adjustment layer right here. And now you can see there is my mask on that layer. So all I wanna do is reduce the saturation in the oversaturated colors, and that's what that mask is targeting. I'll take the saturation slider and start to drag it to the left, and I'm gonna take it over to right there, a minus 50. Now, let me shut this layer off. Here is before and here is after. And now I think I'm getting a better color balance overall. Now, if I disable this mask by clicking the X, you can see what it would look like without the mask. It would really be taking down most of the beautiful saturation, which I would not want. But I'll click the X again and enable the mask, but now we can see it's done a beautiful job just toning the oversaturated colors down a bit. And now it's time for another action. These actions can save you a lot of time and effort. This next action is one of my favorites, color loom or color luminosity. So let's click it. And basically we're getting a black and white adjustment layer that has been adjusted for us by Tony to when you shut this layer off, you don't see a change on your image, which is very important. And you'll notice it's set to the luminosity blend mode, meaning we can adjust the luminosity values of all these different colors, which is quite a powerful adjustment as you'll see. When I'm using this tool, I like to work with the color sliders. If you move them to the right, you'll make that color lighter. To the left, you'll make that color darker. Or if you click on this target tool, you could pick a color like right here. Click, drag to the right to make it lighter, to the left to make it darker. But I like to work with the individual colors myself. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with reds, and I want to darken up my reds a little bit. So I'm going to take this to the left, and all the red tones will get darker. I'm gonna go right there, minus 19. Now I'm gonna to go to yellows. And I think what I wanna do is lighten up the yellows a little bit. So I'll start to move this to the right to like right here, 107, and now we'll move the greens. I'll lighten up the greens a little bit. Move this to the right over to right there, 106. And now cyans. I think I wanna lighten up my cyans a little bit to right here, 87. And now I think I wanna darken up the blues. So I'll move this to the left to right there, a minus 50. 
56. Now magenta. I just want to darken up the magenta some to right there, minus 4. Now let me shut this layer off. Here is before and here is after. But doesn't that do a beautiful job just adjusting the luminosity values of all those different colors? I think I should have subtitled this video the actions video. I'm using a ton of actions here. Next, it's another action. It is a vignette action. So let's click on the vignette action. And the Gaussian blur dialog comes up. And I always accept this for what it gives me. I'm just going to click OK. Now, if I shut this layer off, you can see here's before and here's after. I have an opacity of 30%. I'm going to go ahead and increase that to 60%. Now, I know you might think that's a little too strong. Here's before and here's after. But watch what I do next, which will really help this out. We can use Blend If to help us. So I'm going to come up to the multi mass panel and click on the Edit Blend If button. See down here at the bottom, this is no darks 1, no darks 2, no midtones 1, no midtones 2, no lights 1 or no lights 2. All I want to do is click on no darks too. And you notice how the really dark tones are not getting hit. You see right here, the black area right here, these tones are not getting the vignette right in here, but all the other areas in pink are. So now if I shut this layer off, here's before and here's after. And if I disable the blend diff on the layer by clicking this check box next to the gray, you can see that's what it looks like without the blend diff and I check it back on, this is what it looks like with a blend if. And again, if I shut the vignette off, it looks like this, and now it looks like this. And if you really study the image, it's really hard to tell I even put a vignette on there. And that's the way I like to do vignettes, where you can hardly even notice that they're even there. But it just keeps you into the frame, so you don't go outside of the frame. I'm going to close the Edit Blend If panel by clicking the X. Nothing changes here. We still have our blend if on the layer. What I want to do is click this button right here, which gives us an exposure adjustment layer. You can see it right here. I want to lighten the overall exposure of this image. So I want you to click right here, make this field active. Hold your shift key down and click your up arrow one time. That'll take you up one tenth of a stop. I'm still holding my shift key down, hitting my up arrow. Here's two tenths of a stop. I'm going to do it one more time while holding down the shift key and hitting the up arrow, that's three tenths of a stop. Now that's all I want. But I think my very light highlights are getting too light. And so to take care of that, what would you think I would use? If you're thinking blend if, you are 100% right. So let's click on the edit blend if button right here. And all I'm going to do is click on no lights too. And you can see, see this area right here in the light area where it's not pink or magenta, these are not getting affected by the exposure adjustment, only the areas in pink. And you can see how it transitions off to right into this area right here. Look at the image and look down in this area right here. I'm going to shut off Blend Diff by clicking on this checkbox. This is before. See how that gets lighter down in there? And now I'll check it back on and this is after the Blend Diff. So let me shut this layer off now. Here's before the exposure adjustment, and here is after. And I think that is good. Now, as I study the image, if I look up at the top of the frame right here, see some of these light areas up here? They draw the eye too much up in that area, so I want to darken them up. I'll use a burn tool to do that. Let me X out of the Edit Blend If panel by clicking the X. Nothing changes again on that layer. Let's click on the Zone Mask button, and let's pick a tone like right here. Click and click OK. And now what we can do is see the light areas. That is the zone that I picked right there. What I want to do is tighten that up. So I'm going to take this slider and drag it into the left to maybe somewhere right, right about there. I'll be outputting this to a burn tool painting through a selection. Now normally with a burn tool, it's right here. It has two sides. The left side is a 50% gray layer. The right side gives you a transparent pixel layer. And I usually use the gray side. This time I'll use the right side and I have a reason for that which I'll show you. So I'll click on the right side. And now I have a blank pixel layer in the soft light blend mode. And note that I have a black brush and I have a selection. I'll be painting through a selection. I'm using an opacity of 30%. If you don't have 30%, just type your three key. And with this little larger brush, I'm just gonna start to paint over all of these light areas that I wanna darken up at the top here a little bit. 
Now I lift up my brush, I'll paint again. It'll get a little bit darker every time I paint over them. But I think that's good. I might paint over this area one more time and over here just a little bit more. So I painted three times over those areas. Now look up in this area. I'm going to shut this burn layer off. Here is before and here's after. See how that darkened that down? Now our eye's not going up here as much. But there is something that happens when we darken this. The saturation gets increased a little bit up in here. So I want to take care of that. And that was the reason I used this transparent side right here. Now, right now I have a selection. So I'm going to click this button to deselect my selection. But I've painted on this layer right here. It's really hard to tell. It's really hard to see. But if you hold your command or control key down and click on this blank pixel layer, you will load that up as a selection. You see my selection indicator there. And that's only over the area that I painted. And now what I want to do is... Click this button on the multi mass panel, which will give me a hue saturation adjustment layer. So I'll go ahead and click it. And now you can see there is my mask. And now if I click the double arrow, you can see the mask that is only targeting those light areas that I burned down. Let me click this double arrow again. And now we're going to decrease that saturation. And I'm going to take that back to like minus 80. I'm taking it back a good bit to right there. Now I'll shut this layer off to show you before, but look right up in this area right here. I'm going to shut this off. This is before I reduce the saturation. And now I'll turn it on. Here is after. See how it just tones that down. It just lowers that saturation value a little bit. Now when I look up in this area, I think it's just a little bit too dark. So what I want to do is you'll notice I have the hue saturation layer selected. I'm going to hold my command or control key down and click on the burn layer. These two layers are now selected and now I want to put those in a group and it's real easy with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. You have this group button right here. If you use the left side, you'll put these two adjustments in a group with a black mask, but I want a white mask. So the right side, if I click it, puts these two adjustments in this group with a white mask. Now what I want to do is, is reduce that opacity a little bit because I think it's too dark. So if I drag this opacity the whole way off, you can see it's light again. And I'm just going to take it up to like right there, 60%. So now let me shut this group off. Here's before and now here is after. And I think that looks much better. One final adjustment and we will be done. And it's an easy one. I'm just going to click on my luminosity mask button. Click on midtones one. I just want to lighten up my midtones. I'll put it to a curves adjustment layer and then click on the screen blend mode button. And that just lightens up the image a little bit in the midtones. So we started out, I'm just using the before after button on my combo panel. We started out here and now we end up here so i'm really happy with this edit and i hope you give it a try well there it is everyone another tk friday comes to a close i hope you enjoyed this full edit today if you enjoyed today's tutorial please give it a like share it with your friends and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe click that bell notification icon click all so that you'll receive all notifications and then every time i upload a new tutorial you'll get notified about it I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.